I am an ambivert. I am fully capable of mixing and mingling, introducing myself to strangers, making small talk, and faring solo out in the world. But everything I've mentioned there also gives me this screaming heebies. I do okay here at home, and I'm fully capable of traveling solo to social engagements here in town. Hell, I've put on a few of them myself, so I'm guaranteed to know at least a few people there. My wife has no patience for the douchey glad handling that often accompanies these sorts of things, and she also appreciates it's hard for me to put myself out there if I'm also worried how my introverted better half is faring. And so she doesn't begrudge my solo outings, and I don't try and guilt her into being my plus one. I mean, I do okay flying solo. I can eat at a restaurant on my own okay, and I do okay in social situations. But guaranteed by the end of the night, I will absolutely hate myself for some imagined social gaffe, whether it's a awkward pause, letting a conversation peter out, um, lingering too long in a group discussion, and guaranteed forgetting every damn name that I've been introduced to over the course of the evening. I will come home completely wrung out and drained and need to recharge in the relative quiet of a good book or a really long nap. So why do it? Why submit myself to this slow torture? Well, I realize I need a little stress to up my social game. I think of it like exercise. I do not love getting up at 5 in the morning to go for a jog. The closest I have ever gotten to a runner's high is the joy I feel when my run is over. And yet, I can appreciate the value of jogging and its long-term benefits. Same goes with the pain of repeatedly putting myself out there. I'm always working on it, and I always have. Even in high school, when I realized I was a painful introvert, I forced myself to get a job in retail, if only to learn how to talk to complete strangers. I mean, it's easier. You're given a prescribed pattern. How are you? Is there something I can help you with? No pressure. Nice and easy. And I keep leveling up from there. And I like to think that BookTube is filled with like-minded ambiverts, working through their own social anxieties, insecurities, and speech impediments in a controlled yet strangely public and visible way. I love imagining how tentatively awkward a BookTuber convention would be in real life. All this to say is I'm trying to psych myself up to go solo to a conference. Book Riot Live is slated in the next few weeks, and it seems like the perfect fit. I love their podcasts. It seems like just the right size to start, without being the massiveness that is BEA. And it's in New York City, a city I love. I was there a few years back with my daughter around the same time of the year, and we had a fantastic time. But <sighs> social situations, introducing myself to new people, conference room seating, making small talk at the food table. Ugh. It feels like I'm too old to be having these insecurities. I'm supposed to have figured this out already, but I don't know. I guess I've gotten better at faking it. And it turns out you can't actually die from insecurity. But I also still cringe at things I did in high school. So I guess it's nice to know I'll be making memories that'll last me a lifetime. Book Riot Live has set up a wonderfully diverse lineup. The reason I got into BookTube in the first place, Rincey over at Rincey Reads will be there as well as some of the personalities of my favorite podcasts, including Jeff, Amanda, Rebecca, and Liberty. So yes, I will muscle through the awkward, and I will try and put myself out there. I know I'll be surrounded with like-minded book nerds also putting themselves out there. It is like that old joke, how do you recognize an extroverted book nerd? They're the ones with their head down looking at your shoes. And while I'm in New York, I want to drink mezcal, order a bourbon at a cigar bar, visit a speakeasy, get donuts, New York pizza, New York bagels, street meat. I mean, there's so much to do. So, hey, how do you fare on your own? Any tips for dealing with complete strangers other than ignoring them and pretending to get a really important text message on your phone? Things to do in New York. And yes, I know about the High Line and the Rockefeller Center, Times Square, Central Park, the MoMA. Get me off the beaten path. Maybe you've got tickets for Hamilton that you just don't know what to do with. Hit me up in the comments below and wish me luck. In the meantime, wishing you all a great reading week, and we'll talk to you soon. Bye.